Welcome to Nick's Home Court with your host. My name is Greg Armstrong. This is episode number 19. Music on this podcast is brought to you by Vinsound.com. You can find these podcasts on iTunes under Life Culture Sports, no spaces. You can also find it on SoundCloud under Life Culture Sports. Or you can go to YouTube on my YouTube page and find it under Nick's Home Court. Or you can visit the website lifeculturesports.com forward slash Nick's Home Court. The Knicks lose to Utah. The Pelicans cut Lance Stevenson after he gets injured. Then they say they're going to help him rehab and re-sign him when he gets healthy. And what must the Knicks do to write their season? Coming up on Knicks Home Court. Okay, we're going to get right into analyzing the Knicks loss to Utah. I don't think it's much to discuss on this situation. Uh, you know why they lost defense. But let me just get into a couple of things that I think that the Knicks did do well on this in this game. Uh, one of the things I think they did well is what they've been doing the last two games well is get the ball of Kristaps Porzingis. He has a mismatch almost on every play. Almost every play he has a mismatch and the Knicks need to exploit that. One thing I can say is I don't think their problem is offense. If you want to really figure out what the Knicks problem is, I think it's defense and also their bench. I think that... uh, the Knicks will win a lot of games. Put it like this. If they didn't have injury-prone guys and they can play these guys 35 to 40 minutes a night, they wouldn't lose any games. I mean, they would, they would, they would lose games, obviously, but they will be a much better team. I'm realizing when they go to the bench, there's such a, a, it's such a drop-off. The talent drop-off is ridiculous when they go to the bench. I think that uh, Brandon Jennings has been good off the bench, but I think that Brandon Jennings also needs to score a little bit more off the bench. He's always looking to get people. He plays, listen, the way Brandon Jennings is playing, he's playing like a quintessential point guard, which is great. But that would be great with the first unit. With the second unit, we need him to score a little bit more because Lance Thomas is not giving us any scoring. And for all of those people who were screaming, put Kuz in there, you see they put Kuz in there and he's just not ready yet. He's not ready yet. I think he will be eventually, but he's not ready to take Lance's minutes. He's not ready. He's not having any effect when he comes in the games like a deer in headlights, you know, but Lance Thomas, we need him to get it together. We need him to return to the form he was last year before he got hurt. We need him to be effective. And I think that his confidence, he needs to regain his confidence on the offensive side of the ball. You know, and then of course, coming off an injury, I don't think he's playing like very free right now. You know, he's still probably tentative. And then look, he he missed the game already. So it's a problem. It's a problem. Our bench is a serious problem. I think Justin Holiday has played well. I think he's putting more effort and he tries to score and do little things. But right now, he doesn't have, how can I say, he may have the talent, but he's still developing. He's still figuring it out. You know, and uh, only established offensive player we have off the bench is really Brandon Jennings. So we need him to come in and not just be a facilitator, but really be a scorer. He needs to come in, think, and score. Unfortunately, that's just how it is. And we need to stagger our offense and stagger our starting lineup. And uh, because I noticed when you put Brandon Jennings in with the bench players, the scoring takes a lull. And Brandon Jennings is up there orchestrating and doing good things, but the Knicks are not scoring. And there was a few times, even with the starters, I've noticed Brandon Jennings will make a move and he'll have a layup and he's passing. He's so concerned about passing and playing the right way. We need him to look to score a little bit more. You know, uh, Joe Kim Noah continues to be a positive. We wish we can play him 30 minutes a night. That looks like it can't happen. Uh, I think Melo did a lot of little over dribbling, um, you know, in this game against Utah every not every now and then. But you got to understand for people who think he's over dribbling and not, you know, he's he's 
killing the offense because every time I hear the announcer say this, it makes me cringe because sometimes he gets the ball and it's like nine seconds left on the clock. You know, sometimes it's like that. It's not like early in the clock, he's just dribbling out the, the clock. He doesn't do that like as much as he used to. And he does, he dribbles far less than he used to. Now, I do believe he needs to make quicker decisions, but he dribbles far less than he used to. Um, I want to see a little more two-man two game with him and Christos Przingis. I think that would be efficient. But they lost this game because Utah had a sustained effort on offense and defense. Also, Utah realized we need to get back on defense. Once they started getting back on defense on their misses and the Knicks were forced to play a lot of half court, the Knicks struggled to score. Let's be real. The Knicks struggle to score in the half court because they're still learning each other's tendencies. They're still learning the triangle. They're still learning offense. I think that offense is fine. But if you make them if you make them play a more half court game, you have a better chance against them. You have a far better chance. So it's not just about playing defense and getting out and running like Derrick Rose said. Because they would there was times in the game where they were playing good D. And they were getting the ball and they was trying to run up the court and Utah got back. I'm sure after the half, their coach said, listen, get back on defense. Make them run their half-court offense. And right now, the Knicks are not unstoppable on in their half-court offense. In their fast break, they're pretty good. But once teams figure out, let's get back on defense and lock in on their half-court offense, there's a struggle for the Knicks. So it's not, the entire game is tied in. See, that's what people don't realize. Like, what you do on defense affects your offense. So now, this time, your offense is not going to work. That means you're going to need stops. I remember the Knicks of yesteryear. I'm talking about when I say yesteryear, I mean of the 90s. I remember there was times the Knicks would hold team scoreless for six and seven minutes at a time. And guess what? They wouldn't score either. But they remained in the game because the other team couldn't score in them. Sometimes you have stretches like that where nobody's scoring. Unfortunately for the Knicks, when the Knicks get stopped from scoring, the other team continues to score. And this is how the Knicks always lose their games. There's a lot of fouls. Now, don't get me wrong. I think there was a. I think that the Knicks didn't get a lot of calls uh, against Utah. I don't think they got a lot of calls. However, when you do a lot of fouling, reaching, and with your hands, you're you're that's lazy defense. And a lot of times reaching only leads to fouls. That's not good defense. Good defense is not reaching. Good defense is not going for every block shot. Mm -mm. That's not good defense. That's why when they talk about a, a center who blocks a lot of shots, that doesn't make him a great defensive center. What makes him a great defensive center is how many shots he alters. How many times people refuse to go in the paint because a great defensive center is there. It's not about how much, how many times a wing defender or, or a guard steals the ball. It's about prevention. It's not about how many three-point shots you can block. It's how many three-point shots you, you, you prevent them from taking. So that is the mark of a good defense. And the Knicks right now do not have a good defense. They do not have a good team defense. But the good thing is it's still early. And, they, and I refuse to believe with that talent on that team, even the starting lineup, I believe they're going to get it together. I do believe it. Um, I think at one point their offense will be clicking. I think Chris Stapp's Persingas is coming. He's coming. He's, he's starting to really starting to assert himself. And the Knicks are starting to realize for them to win, they need him scoring 20, 22, 24 points a game. And I know he could do it. You know, I have predicted that he'll be at 18, but I think it's going to be higher than that. His rebound total is, is lower, which I'm not going to say it's alarming. It, it has a lot to do with the offense and where he's at in the offense and where he's at on defense. A lot of teams are putting him out on the wing because they're playing that spread offense, so it's, it's hard for him to get those rebounds. So the Knicks right now need to focus on team rebounds. So I'm not alarmed again. 
I'm going to continue to say don't panic. Let me tell you something. After 25 to 30 games, you're still seeing these problems. Then you need to start sounding the alarm. But early right now, there's no reason to panic. It's early on. As long as you're seeing progress in every game, I'm seeing progress. Utah is a good team. They missed the playoffs by one game. Hayward came back, who's he's a very underrated player because he plays in Utah. Utah has a good team. The Knicks had that game. Like Carmelo said, they let they allowed that game to slip through their fingers. Because you're not winning the game. I mean, I, I know I said this before that you can win the game in the first quarter, but you have teams that will give you a sustained effort. And Utah is one of those teams. They remind me of Memphis with a little more pace to their game. And what they did is they just continued to methodically stay in the game. They used free throws to keep from being blown out in the first half because the Knicks kept fouling with their hands. And sometimes teams who fast break like the Knicks, they get caught up in easy easy uh, steals and block shots so they can get out and run. And I think within time, again, one thing the Knicks have going for them is they have players with a lot of pride that don't like losing and that's very important. Derrick Rose is one of them. Carmelo, of course, is one of them. Joe Kim Noah is one of them. Uh, Courtney Lee, who continues to play well, is one of them. So don't worry. Their professional pride will, will fix this. Believe it or not, you know, players who are used to winning, they will figure it out. So I'm not worried. I'm just pointing out the problems I see with this team. You know, and, and that's all really I need to analyze on the game. It's really nothing else to say. You know, I, I think that the Knicks are improving. It's just so happened their early season schedule is, is ridiculous. And I will get on to that coming up on Knicks home court. But right now, we're going to get into the NBA news of the week. Now, the Pelicans. So Lance Stevenson gets hurt. And they cut him. Now, the Pelicans are saying they cut him because they had to. I guess they cut him because they feel like they needed. They probably needed a roster spot. I'll say this. Lance Stevenson doesn't do himself any favors with a lot of his antics. And the problem is when your antics surpass what you're doing on the court, you become expendable. Many players, even star players, when their antics surpass their skill, a lot of teams don't feel like it's worth it. And that goes with everything. That goes in life and business and relationships. When the headache is bigger than, when the minus is bigger than the plus, people tend to get rid of things. It comes to, I mean, that is that is across the board. Now, they're saying once he gets healthy, they'll resign him. Now, Matt Barnes spoke on his behalf saying, you know, he thought it was wrong that they got rid of him like that. And I think the Pelicans engages engage in a lot of politically correct ad, uh, attitude. You know, they always worry about how things look. And I think that's a dangerous way to be. I think you should focus on winning. I mean, you don't want to be a terrible franchise but let's look at the new england Patri new england patriots in football and the nfl they don't care what things look like they'll cut your ass in a second oh you fumbling like that you're cut oh he had a family to feed so what somebody else will pick him up new england patriots don't give a damn only thing they're concerned with is winning now if they were doing those things and losing then they'll look bad so that's what the pelicans gotta think do what's best for your team don't worry about anything else if you're winning it's fine because right now you're losing, and you got Anthony Davis putting up astronomical numbers. And if y'all don't get it together, now y'all have a few years with him. If y'all don't get it together by the time his contract is up, he is going to leave. I can guarantee you that. Like that situation with DeMarcus Cousins, I don't know how he remains in Sacramento because that's a shit show. So I can guarantee you a player of Anthony Davis's skill and ability, he is not going to stay in New Orleans if they don't build correctly around him. That's all I wanted to say about the Pelicans. I mean, you know, I'm talking about the Pelicans. <laughs> so it's been a good week in the NBA. Uh, the LA Lakers are off to a good start. They're four and three. They thrashed the Golden State Warriors. I watched that game. It was a good game. Well, it wasn't really a good game. It was just, 
I mean, the Lakers are playing an exciting brand of ball. I think eventually they're going to come back down to earth. But they're playing a simple brand of basketball. And I must respect it. And uh, right now, as I said about the Warriors, the Warriors' interior defense is terrible. They have all their scoring. And trust me, they're going to win a lot of games with their scoring. And I think they have good defense. Their defense is not terrible. But when teams, because in the NBA, it's hard to stop guards and good players from getting into the paint. And when you get in the paint and you don't have, you have David West in the paint who probably can't even jump anymore. You don't have any defense. You have Zaza Pachulia, who's not a scrub, but you don't have any defense. You don't have any rim protection. And that was their problem last year when they had more rim protection. Teams are realizing, take it to the paint with these guys. So Steve Kerr has some coaching ahead of him based on their expectations. Okay, they're going to probably most likely be the number one seed. So don't get it twisted. <laughs> they are a very good team. But when they come against teams that can get in that paint, like I really believe San Antonio is now, really now, a bad matchup because they can punish them inside. Who's going to guard LaMarcus Aldridge on uh, Oklahoma City? Okay, so if you say Draymond Green, because you, you got to understand, they're starting five. Or the guys who are going to be on the court most of the time is going to be Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Kevin Durant and Draymond Green. Draymond Green's not a shot blocker. And that's when they put him at center. I remember last year in the finals, that's when LeBron said, wait a minute, Draymond Green's at center? He started attacking. So if Draymond Green is going to be the one guard in LaMarcus Aldridge, they got Paul Casal now. Who's going to guard him? David West? Jaja Pachulia? And sometimes there'll be switches. They can't guard the Spurs down low. They can't. That's going to be a difficult matchup for them. Then you got uh, the, the Los Angeles Clippers who people shouldn't sleep on. De DeAndre Jordan on them alley-oops. Who's going to stop that? Yeah, I know they blowing them out and they crushing them, but the playoff series is completely different. Blake Griffin? Who inside is going to stop them, guys? So I think they have some issues. I think they'll figure it out. I think also what it is is that their offense is so potent that they're going to win a lot of these games. So it is nothing to worry about when it comes to them. Every team has growing pains. And that's going to lead me into the topic of today with the Knicks is how can they improve their situation? How can the Knicks get out of this little bit of a rut, early season rut that they're in? And I'm glad I spoke of Golden State before I got into this topic because Golden State, when you add new players, you're going to have a problem. And I think the Knicks fans need to understand and look at Golden State and look at other teams. The Knicks have added a lot of new players, probably more than any team in the league right now. That's not, that's not easy to do, especially with good players who expect the ball in certain places and expect certain things. That's not an easy thing to do. So defense, yes, is going to be a problem with the Knicks. It's going to be a problem with the Knicks because people don't know where they're going to be. Offense is ahead of the defense right now because they have elite offensive players. But on a defense, that's a team thing. So that's a problem. And also, I was looking at the Knicks schedule. So basically, to start the season, they're playing playoff teams. Which is good because their January schedule is light. January, they can, they can go on some winning streaks in January. and But they started off their season with Cleveland. Championship team. They played Memphis. Now, Memphis did not make the playoffs, but they had... That's because Powell Casal wasn't there. Utah missed the playoffs by one game. I mean, they're playing nothing but playoff teams so far and very good teams I mean let's look at it Detroit playoff team Houston was a playoff team last year so they had what Detroit Houston two playoff teams Chicago who was I think four and one by the time they faced them faced them Utah 
which, like I said, missed the playoffs by one game. They have a gimme in Brooklyn, a game they must win. They must beat Brooklyn. So maybe it's good they lost to Utah because they'll be focused in against Brooklyn. And Brooklyn comes to play, so the Knicks better come to play straight up and down. Then they have Boston and Toronto on a back-to-back. That's ridiculous, man. That's not an easy schedule. I mean, then they have Dallas, who made the playoffs, who are having their struggles now. They have Detroit again. Washington, who was not a bum team, but they didn't make the playoffs. So that's okay. That's supposed to be a game the Knicks should win. Atlanta, Portland, Charlotte on the back-to-back, another playoff team. Oklahoma City and Minnesota, a budding young team. This is in November. This is just November. They don't have an easy schedule. So the Knicks are going to have to get it together pretty quickly but you know but fans don't need to worry Nick fans there's no need to, to stress and, 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 and be worried I mean it's early in the season and I believe these players are going to get it together I really believe it I think that they're noticing how good Chris Stapps is because in this league let me tell you this is not a this is a man's league man you can't be in here like Chris Stapps I'm glad that he's figuring it out as far as He's making his way in the paint. Um, I wouldn't say he's demanding the ball, but he's putting himself in good positions to get the ball because people keep saying the key to the next season is Joe Kim Noah. The key to the next season is uh, Derek Rose. Honestly, the key to the next season is the entire team. There's no, you can't pull, it, it, it's everybody. The Knicks are not good enough to have one guy be the key to their season. They're not that good like that. You know, I mean, they, I think they're good. Don't get me wrong, but they need an entire effort. I could say the key to their season is the bench. That's true. But what if what if Chris uh, Stapp starts averaging 25 points a game? It changes the whole dynamic of the Knicks team. What if he becomes their leading scorer? What if him and Melo starts averaging 25 together? What if they get hot and that chemistry develops? What if Derrick Rose starts averaging, like I said, 16 and 10 every game? What if Noah plays more minutes and, and continues to facilitate, facilitate the offense? Excuse me. So there's a lot of moving pieces. You know, people want to pinpoint one thing and you, you really can't do that. You really can't pinpoint one thing. There's a lot of moving pieces to the next season. There's also injuries to other teams, injuries to the Knicks. I mean, look at Al Horford. He's already hurt. And he does get hurt uh, quite a bit. And I think that uh, the Boston Celtics, they're one move away from really being a great team. I think they're a good team at this point, but they need another star. They have all the pit bulls, but they don't have that star. So anyway, but back to the Knicks. Like I said, people, there's nothing to worry about. I think the Knicks... I think their offense will be more efficient in the coming weeks and coming games. And I think their defense, put it like this, their defense, all right, let me just be clear. Their defense will never be great. This entire season, their defense will never be great. We don't need their defense. Their offense doesn't need their defense to be great. They need to be great in spurts. It, it, it reminds me of a team in the past, Los Angeles Lakers, the championship Lakers, the Magic Johnson Lakers. They didn't have a great defense. What they had is a defense in spurts. Their defense would coincide with their offense. So they would go on a 10-0, 15-0 run on you. And for the rest of the game, it might be trading buckets. The Knicks need to, need to be able to do that. The Knicks need to be able to say, okay, let's turn it on. Let's lock down. Let's go on a run. And right now, the Knicks don't have that gear. They need that next gear where they could just say, okay, we're going to lock these teams down. We're going to play the pick and roll. We're going to get out and run. We're going to get, you know, we're going to we're gonna go on a run. Good teams can do that. But it takes chemistry to do this too. So again, all of these games and a lot of these losses, it's not about talent. It's about chemistry. It's not about effort either. It's not just about effort. I believe the Knicks are trying out there. But again, team defense takes a lot. It takes chemistry, man. It takes knowing what Chris Stapps is going to do on a pick and roll, knowing what Melo's going to do. Even if Melo's a lazy defender, okay, maybe Derrick Rose can compensate for that. Derrick Rose seems to understand completely what the problem is. 
knowing if a player is going to hedge or if a player is going to fall back. Also, knowing the scouting reports. Now, that is a big thing because Rodney Hood kept hitting that mid-range shot and they kept leaving him open for that. Don't worry about the paint. Today's NBA, players don't go to the rack like that. They just don't. You don't want to allow a lot of layups, but you know what? You can make that adjustment during out the, throughout the game. You know, so I, I've seen I've seen some good things. I've seen some bad things. There's some really good things going on with the Knicks in terms of offense, and and and, and Derrick Rose is a real big plus right now. Everybody has to admit the way he's playing. No one expected that. Well, of course, Nick fans expected that. And I saw a lot of last year, and I saw the burst last year. It's just a matter of him getting used to his new way of playing. And that's it. Don't panic, Nick fans. There's a lot of games left, and uh, I think we should get we should get a win on against Brooklyn. I will not analyze that game. We should just get a win. We're a better team. We have more talent, and we cannot let teams with less talent beat us. Period. And that has to be a theme throughout the entire season. We need to put our foot on the throat of them. They don't have Jeremy Lin. We need to just come in there and just beat them by 20 and get it out of it and get and get it in because we have a heavy schedule coming up. We need to put these games behind us and we need to get big wins also so we can let the bench get more time and get more confidence. All right. So that brings us to the end of Nick's Home Court, episode number 19. I am your host. My name is Greg Armstrong. Again, you can find these on you can find these podcasts on iTunes under Life Culture Sports, no spaces. SoundCloud under Life Culture Sports. You can go to the website lifecultureSports.com forward slash Nick's Home Court, or you can also find it on YouTube. And big shout out to my YouTube followers and subscribers and listeners. I really appreciate that. You know, I, I do it for the fans. I do it also to have an objective voice contrary to what we hear, you know, the Robin Lumbergs and the and the the people out there that take the same stance with the Knicks all the time until the Knicks start winning. That's just how it is. We have to be optimistic as fans or why should we watch? Seriously. Anyway, that's Knicks home court. Speak to y'all later. Peace.